name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Today, we're going to continue our study of the great book of Matthew with the 14th chapter. In our last Bible study, we saw how Christ spoke to the crowd in parables only because he understood that the majority of those people weren't serious about him so therefore he would not just speak to them plainly like he did his inner circle of friends and so he spoke two major parables in that 13th chapter and when he sent the crowd away he explained plainly what those parables meant to his inner circle so very important that you understand that if you're not serious about God, he's not going to be serious about you. So today we're going to go right into the 14th chapter of this great book of Matthew with the very first verse. And it reads, At that time, Herod, the teacher, heard of the fame of Jesus. Now, this is not Herod the Great, the Herod that tried to have Christ killed when he was a baby. This is the son of Herod the Great, whose surname was Antipas, okay? So that's not the same Herod. And when it says teacher, that means a governor of the fourth part of a region. And just like his father, Rome was the one who put him in that seat of authority. So he heard of the fame of Jesus, verse 2, and said to his servants, this is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. And therefore, mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Verse 3. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. Verse 4. For John said to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. So Herod Antipas had John the baptizer locked up because John was bold enough to tell him that he was wrong for taking his brother Philip's wife and making her his wife. The Bible says in Proverbs 28 verse 1, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So John did not have a death wish. He was just a righteous man, not afraid to take a stand for God. And when we do that, sometimes you're going to have to pay the consequences. So John got locked up for telling Herod Antipas that he should not be married to his brother Philip's wife, Herodias. Verse 5. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. So Herod Antipas was afraid to have John the Baptist put to death because all the people knew that he was a prophet of God. Six. And when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias, whose name was Salome, danced before them and please Herod, seven, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask, eight, 
And she being before instructed of her mother said, give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. That means on a platter. Nine. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat or at dinner, he commanded it to be given her, 10, and sent and beheaded John in the prison, 11. And his head was brought in a charger, on a, that means on a platter, and given to the damsel, given to the young lady, and she brought it to her mother, 12. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it, and went and told Jesus. Now, John died a horrible death. I mean, to be beheaded is just like one of the worst things I could think of. But if we look at his death the way God would have us look at it, John died a very honorable death. He died for God. That's right. There's no more honorable death that a person can experience than a death doing God's work or living for God. Because if you die for God, you're guaranteed heaven. So very important that we learn to look at it that way because that's the way it is in the eyes of God. Uh, Jesus said, if you try to save your life, you're going to lose your life. And if you lose your life for his sake in the gospel, you're going to save your life. And always remember that Jesus Christ himself died for us. So if we are called upon to make the ultimate sacrifice like John did, then it's a great honor and a great privilege because we won't be doing anything less than what Jesus did for us. Okay? Very important that we get that in our spirit now. 13. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence, or he departed from that place by ship into a desert place apart and when the people had heard of it, they followed him on foot out of the cities. 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. So he couldn't get a moment of rest. Wherever he went, they found him. But because he came to do the work of Almighty God the Father, he never shirked his duty. He saw the people were sick, and he just started healing all the people. 15. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. He said, You better send all these people away so they can go get them something to eat in those villages around there. 16. But Jesus said to them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat, or you give them something to eat. And I bet the uh, apostles looked at each other like, what is he talking about? <laughs> 17. And they said to him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. That's all we got. 18. And he said, bring them hither to me, or bring them here to me. 19. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude or the great crowd. 20. And they did all eat and were filled and they took up of the fragments that remain, twelve baskets full. Twenty-one. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Wow. I believe he's he did this to teach us who are living even to this day that he can take care of us no matter what, under any circumstance. So that's something you and I need to know. We cannot limit God. There is nothing too hard for him. That's what I believe he did this for. All right. Uh, 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him to the other side 
while he sent the multitudes away. Now, Christ always had a purpose for what he did. He said, y'all get in that boat. Y'all go over there. I'm going to meet you over there. I'll send them away. 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. Now, notice Christ always had that alone time with the Father. Very important that we do that, that we communicate with our Heavenly Father on a daily basis. I mean, more than one time in a day. Anyway, he went up into the mountain to pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. So he was up there a long time talking to the Father. 24. And the ship was now in the midst, or the middle of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And I don't think for one second that Christ didn't know this was going to happen. Sometimes Christ leads us into certain situations that are difficult, so we can learn to exercise faith in him. Okay? That's why he did this. 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. So there were several watches that they had. The men on the boat, so some could keep uh, making sure the boat was moving forward, doing what they needed to do, while others I got some sleep. In the fourth watch, Christ came walking on the sea. I would have liked to have seen that. That, that would have been quite a thing to experience. Uh, it would have scared the hell out of me, just like it did them, but I still would have liked to have seen it. 26, and when his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit! And they cried out for fear. It scared the you-know-what out of them. Oh my God, it's a ghost! Here he goes! <laughs> 27. But straightway Jesus spake to them, saying, Be of good cheer! It is I! Be not afraid! So Christ spoke up immediately so they wouldn't freak out. They probably would have jumped out of the boat and started trying to swim away. 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me or allow me to come to you on the water. Now, I'm translating these archaic words as I read to help you learn the modern English word. So Peter asked Jesus for permission to come out on the water to him. He was always the one willing to try something. 29. And he said, come. <laughs> Jesus said, come up. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So the Lord gave him the ability to do this miracle. 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. So he Lost his concentration. He was looking at the wind and he freaked out. Ah! It started going down. And he said, Lord, save me. 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, wherefore or for what reason didst thou doubt or did you doubt? What did you doubt for? You had it, man. I gave you the ability to do it because you believed in me. And then you're going to start doubting. So there's a lesson in there for us. If the Lord tells us to come, that means he has given us everything we need to do it. And we need to just rest in that ability that he has granted. Okay? Anyway, 32. And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. As soon as he got him in the boat, he made the wind stop. 33. Then... They that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, you are the Son of God. They came and bowed down, saying, You are God's Son, man. We ain't never seen nothing like that in our whole life, man. That was another reason he was doing these miracles, so they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he was Emmanuel, God with us. Okay? Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, in the Hebrew tongue, the Savior of the world. All right. 34, and when they were gone over, they came into the land of Genezareth. 35, and when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about 
and brought to him all that were diseased. Soon as they heard he was there, they're like, man, go get everybody you know that's sick. Jesus is here. <laughs> 36. And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. I like that. And as many as touch were made perfectly whole. So they had faith that he could heal them. It was the custom of the people that if they touched the hem of a rabbi, they would get a special blessing. That's why they said, you don't have to do much, Jesus. Just let us touch the hem of your garment. And he said, go ahead. And as soon as they did it, they were all healed. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account. And then you can also download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number which is 630-441-4563. And then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, send it to BartonAaronPorter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, Please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry. And I need your support, saints. So please do that. And last but not least, it just came to my mind. If you really were blessed by a Bible study video, take the time to put something in the comment section. It encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain. And God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. So take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, 
in closing, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. And I just recently purchased the domain name. It's godware.store. So please go to godware.store. Check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye. Hello, brothers and sisters. I want to tell you about my new t-shirt. I'm a Jesus kind of guy. And on the back, it says, I'm close to him like a necktie. These are my own personal designs, and they can be used as the perfect tool to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ without ever opening your mouth. And they are now available at my online t-shirt store at godware.store. And all my t-shirts come in hoodies, women t-shirts, and coffee mugs. So I encourage you to go to my online t-shirt store and get yourself some godware today.